Hi, thanks again for joining. This is Michael Martella, Senior Investment Advisor in CIM, um, joined by JP Laporte uh, from Integris Pension, Ma uh, Pension Management Corporation. He is the CEO. He is a pension lawyer with over 22 years of experience, very uh, well-recognized uh, and excellent reputation. I've been dealing with JP for quite some time now. JP, thanks again for joining. Uh, we're going to be talking during this uh, particular segment about uh, benefits of a PPP plan during the retirement stage of one's uh, one's career or, or, or life stage. So, uh, you know, we've gone through accumulation, we've gone through the sales process in other segments. Now we're going to tackle the benefits of having a PPP plan while you're retired. So you you might you might still be working, you might still be active just means that income is coming out of the pension plan. Most cases, the person is no longer working and it's a major source of your income. Uh, so JP, thanks again for, for joining uh, and, and, and contributing. Uh, the information is so beneficial. You know, a lot of times I, I, I have clients that, you know, focus obviously on retirement planning and tax planning. Uh, and for some reason, you know, the, the, it's drilled in their head that the main, so, you know, RRSP, 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 and now it's RRSP and TFSA. But I try to make them understand that having multiple sources of asset classes or multiple sources of, account, you know, retirement accounts, if you will, is probably the most important part of retirement planning. So having assets inside of a pension plan or a PPP, having assets allocated in, in the corporation as a, as a corporate investment vehicle, having assets inside of a TFSA, uh, an opened account, uh, the more the better, right? So it just gives options, it gives flexibility to someone. Uh, and that's what you're really looking for during retirement, flexibility uh, to choose where the money comes from in, 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 you know, especially during situations that are not consistent income requirements. So, uh, you know, you want to pay for a wedding, you want to give a gift to somebody, you want to travel the world, these expenses that are not fixed on, on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, that's where you come and see me and, hey, Michael, where am I taking this extra 50 grand from? You know, and, and then I kind of give you an, uh, uh, a scenario of where it should come from. So JP, let's, let's get right into it. Um, the benefits of a PPP or having a PPP when you're retired. Let's, sure. let's, let's hear them. Yeah. So I've jotted down five, five <laughs> benefits. All right. All right. So let's, let's grind through all the detail. Sure. The first one is called income splitting, pension income splitting. Yeah. So you know that with a RIF, you're allowed to split your RIF income with a spouse, but you have to be 65. Yeah. With a PPP, you could be 40 and you could income split your uh, pension with a spouse, which means that you allocate 50% of your pension to the tax return of your spouse. Therefore, you only pay tax on the remaining 50%. Right. Now, there's one nuance for your customers in the province of Quebec. This income splitting only applies for federal, the federal portion. The provincial tax uh, can only be split after 65. We are special, JP. We are yeah. special. That's right. But for your non-Quebec clients, uh, all of it, federal and provincial, can be income split before 65 if you're in a PPP, right. not if you're in a PPP. So that's number one. Number two, well, that's 1A. 1B is that on top of being able to split your income, and by the way, just to give you an order of magnitude, if, for example, I'm going to pull a number out of thin air, if the annual pension was $169,000, and I had a spouse that had no income, stay-at-home mom or whatever, um, and I split my income with my spouse. As a couple, we would save $17,000 a year in taxes. Because, because that 170 k is being divided between two, file, two tax filings. Exactly. The splitting, the splitting creates a $17,000 tax savings to the couple. Wow. Okay. So when people say, oh, I don't know if I want to set up a PPP, it seems expensive. I'm like, <laughs> not doing it is expensive. Right. So so that's that's one A. One B is that on top of that, my spouse and myself are able to claim every year that I'm a pension income splitting, 
a $2,000 non-refundable pension amount credit on my tax return. So the first $4,000 of pension income is very lightly taxed because we can uh, apply for these non-refundable credits. And again, you can do that at age 40. So you have a 25-year advantage over someone in an RSP RIF. Can you be taking, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask a question which I think I know the answer to. The answer should be no, but maybe I'm wrong. Can you be taking these $2,000 tax credits out every year while still contributing to the pension plan? No, you have to be receiving a pension. Right. Okay. I tried. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number two, if you're a non-resident of Canada, let's say you decide to cross the border. Um, normally, two things happen. Yeah. First of all, if you're receiving a pension, like I was using 169000 as an example, it could be 200, 300, whatever it is. As a non-resident, there's a special rule under the Income Tax Act that says that pension is going to be taxed at 25%. It's a flat 25%. Right. But if you, belong, if you live in one of the countries that Canada has signed a tax treaty with, and there's about 100 of them, most of them are very civilized places. That 25% is actually reduced to 15%, which, if you're good with math, is actually a 40% drop in the amount of tax you're paying. Right. So, so let me just let me just get this clear here, just for the sake of argument. You have you have uh, a couple that that is is in the retirement. They they've sold their business or they're. They wound it down. They're they they're in the retirement years, and they decide to become a non-resident for however possible. And they decide to move to the United States, uh, and they're expats, so they're no longer residents of Canada, and they're receiving their pension. Yeah. <clears throat> Whatever, how old they are, it doesn't matter. Eight, they're sixty years old. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And they're collecting this pen their pension from their pension plan, their PPP. They're paying 15% on the Canadian side. Yeah. Total. That's it. Now, I know you're not a foreign tax specialist, but are pensions taxable on the other side of the border? It depends on the jurisdiction. Okay. And then if it is, then you can apply for foreign tax credits. Correct. So technically, just for argument's sake, uh, let's say they're paying 15% in Canada on their pension and the U.S. taxes them at 30. Then they'll apply for a, a, a credit because they can't be double taxed per se. Uh, and some way, somehow, it'll work out where the total taxes are reduced to, uh, to, to reflect the double taxation. Is that something of... of, of yeah, like you said, I'm not a foreign tax credit expert, so I, I won't get into it, I, I know is that in certain circumstances, Canadians can apply for foreign tax credits to yeah. avoid uh, double taxation. Perfect, okay. So we'll, uh, I'm pretty certain what I said was correct, but definitely double check with your uh, with your yeah. accountant who specializes in foreign taxation. Okay, so let's- So, so that's 2A, 2A is uh, only paying 15% Canadian tax on your Canadian sourced pension. From right. The 2B is that a lot of people often don't know this, but Canada has what's called a departure tax. Yeah. A deemed disposition on most of your wealth if you leave the country. It's the last time the government has a chance to tax you on, on all your Canadian assets. However, there is an exception to that rule if you own what are called exempt assets. Yeah. So RSPs are exempt assets, but so are PPP assets. Now, the difference is you can put significantly more money in a PPP than an RSP. Yep. So the fact that this money is exempt from taxation is multiplied if you use a PPP instead of an RSP. Right. So what you're, what you're saying is uh, like uh, what, during retirement or even? Anytime. When you anytime. leave the country. So anytime, the, guy, anytime the, the, the person is leaving the country, um, so let's say they have, let's say they have a corporation, let's say they're, they're, they have a corporation and they're leaving the country, the corporate assets, let's say there's a portfolio, whatever, a million dollars inside of a corporation, 
and they decide to leave, they, they become non-residents of Canada, they, they move to the US. That corporation, there's a deemed disposition because it's 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 like as you had mentioned, it's an exit tax, if you will. Yeah. However, if we implement a PPP plan, we trigger, like we retire and do the catch up. There might be there might be a hundred thousand, there might be fifty thousand, there might be two hundred, there might be half a million that that might be able to move into the PPP plan and therefore avoid taxation because now it's part of the pension plan. It's exempt. It's an exempt asset. An exempt asset. Okay. So this is really good for people that you know are planning on uh, planning on you know in the future leaving leaving the country. And one of the main issues that I run into with, with Canadians that are planning on leaving Canada and going to the United States with corporations is, well, man, if I, now I have to pay, now I have to pay tax on, on my corporation as if I'm selling everything. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately you do, but if, if you are eligible for a PPP because you're taking a T4, from that corporation or the affiliate of that corporation, because there's you know hold co sometimes attached to the op co, uh, you you might be able to protect some of those assets in a PPP and make them exempt assets. Correct. So that was two B. Yep. Number three is unlike an RSP where you cease your contributions at age seventy one. Yep. You're not allowed to contribute past age seventy one to an RSP. Because it converts into a RIF and no one's allowed to contribute to a RIF. Correct. With the PPP, through what are called special payments, which we discuss in, in another segment, your the corporation can continue to claim tax deductions well past age 71, all the way until you die and sometimes beyond, if you have family members in the plan. So this these tax deductions that you're granting your company continue well beyond age 71. So you can end up with significantly more registered money right. than if you were in an RSP. Right. Uh, point number four is that the investment management fees that are paid to manage the assets of the PPP also create tax deductions. And those can be triggered and continue to be applied after age 71, even though you're retired. Right. So this is this is a big one because well from my from my point of view because RSP management fees are non deductible therefore RIF and LIF management fees are non deductible. However, in a PPP plan, when you're accumulating the wealth, it's deductible. My fees are deductible even even when we move existing RSPs into the pension plan my fees become deductible. When the pension plan is triggered, meaning you're taking income from it, my fees are still deductible, which cannot be applied on the RSP slash RIF slash LIF side of the equation. Over time, JP, I think in, the last, in one of the other segments, we talked about it, that this could be tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars of tax credits and slash savings over your lifetime. Just think about it. If you have a portfolio of a million dollars and, you know, just to use easy math, the fee is 1%. That's $10,000 of fees that you could deduct versus not deduct every year, right? So imagine, you know, having this for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years uh, or more from the accumulation stage all the way until you die. The, the, the fee deductibility is massive. Yep. And it just gets bigger because the assets keep growing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the last point I wanted to cover the uh, PP advantage in retirement is ongoing creditor protection. Uh -huh. Because pension law protects the assets of the pension plan. Yeah. Now, it may not be uh, popular to sue a senior citizen, but you know, if something happened in your life and you get sued, at least the money in the pension plan is off limits to your creditors. Right. Do you know? Do you know what happens in the case of uh, separation of uh, marriage or uh, break breakdown of uh, patrimony? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side of the equation you are. But yeah. uh, 
pension assets are considered part of family matrimony, mm -hmm. patrimony. Yep. So, so you you do they do become subject to division with the next spouse. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what that's what I thought. I just wanted to, to clarify. But, but not surplus. If there's surplus, that's a different matter. Okay. So there there's some there's some differences there. Yeah. And the income the income from it later is also divisible. Yeah, although it's not, you're not obliged to split your income. You could say, you know what? I'll keep the PPP. You get the cottage. I understand. So, right? so equalize that way. But if there's no cottage and the only asset to split is the pension, then you can you can give up to fifty percent of it to to a, a spouse. And do you know if it remains under? So let's say let's say there's a PPP, and there's again easy math. There's a million dollars in this PPP. And it's under one person's name, and then there's a separation. Um, ha technically, let's say half a million dollars leaves, and is now under the spouse's name because of the whatever agreement of the separation. Under the spouse's name, is it still classified as a PPP, or is it now switched to to something else because that spouse has nothing to do with the corporation anymore. Yeah, I don't know. It would go into the spouse's uh, RRSP or RIF. Okay, so it's no now same same tax advantage same advantages on the the the, 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 the RRSP or RIF side, meaning it's you're growing tax free and all that stuff, but we can no longer deduct the management fee and there's no other. It has uh, left the world. It, uh, it has left the world of the PPP. It has left the world of the All PPP. All the advantages that we've been talking about in these segments cease. Right. Hopefully it never happens, but uh, you know, reality is such that a certain percentage of, of people do. So it's very important to, to discuss. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, any other advantages there, uh, JP, during the retirement stage? Uh, there are a few more, but those are the main ones that I wanted to cover with you today. Yeah. So... Um, JP, thanks again. I know uh, you're 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 a busy man, uh, so I do appreciate your time. If uh, you guys have any questions about uh, this particular segment or anything else about PPP, uh, please feel free. The best way to just either send me a text message or call me. It's 514-497-7219. JP, thanks again, and looking forward to the next segments, my friend. Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye.